Hi everyone, Felix here. Would you like to join us here at Camp Myth? Show us how you're enjoying the story so far, and our favourite entry will entitle the winner to join Moxie, Argy and me, Felix, in a future Camp Myth story. Any type of entry is fine. Drawings, stories, poems, photographs. How about a video of you singing Centaur Races? Submit them by December the 31st of this year, 2013, to campmyth at castofwonders.org. Hope to see you. This is Cast of Wonders, the young adult fiction podcast featuring stories of the fantastic. Welcome to Camp Myth. Chapter 13. December 18th, 2013. Welcome back, campers. Are you ready for chapter 13? Wait a minute. What could be big enough to capture a thunderbird in its jaws? What have Felix, Argy, and Moxie gotten themselves into? Quick, where were we? Ah, yes. Camp Myth, Phoenix Watching, by Chris Lewis Carter Chapter 13 Its body shape was that of a lion, except with pale fur and a pair of deep blue wings folded neatly across its back like a feather shield. Even more unsettling, though, was its distinctly human head, slender and female, that peered back at us with eyes like sapphires. We watched as she dug a hole with her massive front paw, then gently placed the thunderbird inside. I am sorry this was your destiny, she said in a dreamy tone. But you have served your purpose with grace and dignity. Surprisingly, Argy was the first of us to speak. We didn't mean to intrude on your t- territory, Mom, he stuttered. But thanks... For saving us. She tilted her head in contemplation. Save you? I merely completed a chain of events that was set in motion on the day that creature first hatched. She replied, then began filling the hole with dirt. Clearly, it was meant to bring you here, just as the rock brought you to Camp Myth. As the Stymphalion led you to the Ooslem, and the Ooslem to the Thunderbird, so too were we destined to meet. It is the great thread, the seam of creation. We are, all of us, connected. Had this creature been following us throughout the forest all morning? How do you know all of that, I asked. Who are you? Her tail whipped back and forth in looping circles. There is nothing in this world or any other that is beyond my knowledge. My kind have went by many names throughout many eras, Lore weavers, enigma crafters, the masters of secrets. But you, child of the grove, may refer to me as a sphinx. Even though her presence was unsettling, she seemed far too well spoken for just another wild creature. Are you a counsellor? I said. She considered this for a moment, then replied, I sometimes offer counsel to those worthy of receiving it. But that does not necessarily make me a counsellor. She crept toward me and circled like a jackal stalking its victim. Are you in need of counsel, child of the grove? My heart was pounding in my chest. We don't want any trouble. We're just trying to find a phoenix, that's all. She purred and it almost sounded like laughter. Ah, yes. I know where the flamed avian takes refuge. It is not far from here. And I might be so inclined to help. Moxie grunted. (laughs) Why do I get the feeling there's going to be a catch? The Sphinx flashed her an icy glance. Ah, the child of traitors speaks at last. She droned. You are correct, girl. All things come at a price. I will give you the answer to one question, provided you manage to solve one of my riddles. Moxie folded her arms across her chest and bared her teeth for a moment. Her cheeks flushed to a bright red. What happens if we're wrong? Argy asked. Oh, that would be very bad indeed, the Sphinx said. 
If that were the case, I'd have to eat you. We all shot each other nervous glances, unsure if this was a threat or an attempt at humour. With her monotone voice, it was impossible to tell. You're joking, right? I said. She fluffed her wings casually. Who can say? Though, it will be easier for all of us if you simply answer correctly. You have one guess. Then we refuse, Moxie said. Thanks for the opportunity, scary cat lady, but I think we'll be better off finding the nest on our own. That seemed to really set the Sphinx off. Her fur stood on end and she extended her wings menacingly. She raised her front paw and revealed five gleaming claws. One does not simply decline a Sphinx's offer. In a flash, she retracted them and returned to her previous unflinching state. Now then, are you ready to hear your riddle? Doesn't look like we have much of a choice, I said. The Sphinx cleared her throat, then said, What is my name? All three of us froze. Argy began blinking rapidly as if fear had hijacked his eyelid. That's not a riddle! Moxie yelled. How are we supposed to guess that? The Sphinx purred triumphantly. You are right, child of traitors. You do not know the answer. In fact... Only one of you three campers is capable of answering correctly. That is your only clue. My brain went into overdrive. Only Argy or I were able to answer the riddle? It didn't make any sense. I took a deep breath and tried to concentrate on the information I had. If Argy held the correct answer, there wasn't anything I could do. But if it was me, what did I know that he didn't? Sweat began to bead on my forehead. Did it have something to do with humanity? Studying them was my favourite hobby, but Argy likely knew much more about them than I did. Wait a second. The Sphinx said that only one of us three campers were able to solve the riddle, so maybe it had something to do with our time at Camp Myth so far. Was there anything that I did without Argy and Moxie? We'd all flown here on the same bus and spent the entire evening together. The only time we'd been apart was... The tour! They weren't with me on the tour. Argy had been dragged off by Brontes, and Moxie was meeting with Lil and Tessa. That had to be it, but what? A light bulb flickered on inside my brain. During the tour, Loam had pointed out what he referred to as a thinking rock, the stone slab with blue feathers scattered around the base. She is the smartest one, he had said, much smarter than the rest of us. Your name is Althea, I declared. Argy and Moxie looked at me in horror, as though I'd just wasted our only guess. The Sphinx's cool smugness faded, replaced by a thin smile that barely creased her lips. You are clever indeed, child of the grove. I apologize for testing you so harshly. Wait a second. Moxie said, dumbfounded. How did you know that? Turns out you missed a pretty informative tour, I replied. I turned to Althea. So you are a counsellor here? I am, and have been for many years. She said. Ever since. She paused. Ah, but surely that is not the question you mean to ask. One week, one riddle, one answer. It is the law of my kind. Now then, what do you wish to know? Part of me desperately wanted to know why she'd twice referred to Moxie as the child of traitors, but instead I said, Where is the closest phoenix nest? Althea's sapphire blue eyes glimmered with a universe of understanding. There is another clearing exactly 200 yards north of here, where a phoenix has just recently constructed a nest. It is just off the main hiking trail, so you can easily find your way back to camp. Thank you, ma'am, I said. It is my pleasure. Argy raised his hand as though he needed permission to speak. Um, Althea, ma'am? He said. You weren't really going to eat us if we got the riddle wrong, were you? She flopped onto her side and smiled. For that answer, I'd have to ask you another riddle. As we made our way back through the trees, she called out to us once more. We will meet again, child of the grove. You will need more answers throughout your journey. And I have many riddles to share. (laughs) 
This week's camper spotlight is Chip, the blue-blooded beast. Felix says, most Minotaur spend their time in the labyrinth thinking up creative traps to spring on anyone foolish enough to explore the halls without a guide. Not Chip, though. He considers himself to be much more refined than the average Minotaur. In fact, if you discovered his secret lair, you'd be rewarded with the best cup of chai tea you'd ever tasted. He says the secret is extra cinnamon. Chip was invented by Jeremy Chippett. You can find the picture of him on the Camp Myth webpage. Cast of Wonders could use your help. We love to bring you free stories every week, but we can't do it without your support. Please consider donating at castofwonders.org where you'll find buttons for regular and one-time donations via PayPal. Or you can help spread the word about our Camp Myth project and our weekly stories every Sunday by liking us on Facebook, writing us a review on iTunes, or blogging or tweeting about one of our episodes. There's lots of ways you can show your love for our Tales of the Fantastic. Camp Myth Phoenix Watching is a Cast of Wonders production brought to you by Wolfsbane Publishing and the voice talents of Kate Baker, Adam Black, Tina Connolly, Graham Dunlop, Christiana Ellis, Marguerite Kenner, Alethea Contis, Alistair Stewart, Ian Stewart, and Barry J. Northern. You can learn more about the world of Camp Myth at our website, castofwonders.org. Our weekly episodes are released under a Creative Commons, attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Share it, but don't change it or sell it. The Camp Myth theme music, August, is by Alexi Nov from musicalley.com. Thanks for listening.